Hello, hello, hello. I am Samuel Archer, your host. This is the Musilog Magazine podcast. And today we have two special guests in the building. We want to welcome Laurie Mirabal. Mm-hmm. And we have Sharon Shepard Levine. How are you ladies doing today? I am fantastic. I feel great. How are you doing today? <laughs> I am fabulous today. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us on your show. Yes, yes. So we want to welcome you both to the show. And why don't we start where you say something, a little something about yourself? Okay. Should I start, Sharon, or would you? Absolutely. Well, I am Lori Brown Mirabal. I'm a professional opera singer. I've been singing many, many, many years internationally. I'm also a music teacher for elementary school kids. I'm an entrepreneur. I have an opera uh, company, outreach company called Opera Soup Productions. I've written books. I put out a recording and now I've had the pleasure of an honor of co-producing this documentary film with this fantastic film director, Miss Sharon Shepard Levine. <laughs> and I'm Sharon Shepard Levine. <laughs> uh, I have many, many, many years of um, pro- producing, directing, and editing uh, videos with a sensitive nature. And um, have I'm just thrilled, beyond thrilled to have partnered with the fabulous Lori Brown Marival on this documentary. Thank you. All right, all right. So I want to, again, welcome you all. I'm sure the viewers and listeners of the Musilog family and anyone else who checks this out, I'm very, very sure they are going to, they are going to enjoy this episode because we have a lot to talk about and we are about to jump in. <laughs> are you guys ready to jump in? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so first on on the on the menu, and we're not gonna eat anything, but first on the on the uh, itinerary, I would let's go with itinerary today. We have a documentary that's going to be uh, airing uh, on the twenty third of March. Yes, around one p.m. EST. Yes. On Fox Soul? Yes. All right. So take it away. Let us know about the premiere, and then we're going to dive right into what are we premiering. (laughs) Okay. So as you said, it will be streaming. It premiered last month, actually, Black History Month. Mm -hmm. They, They are streaming it again. They've streamed it a couple of weeks ago, and they will be streaming it. March 23rd at okay. one o'clock Eastern time. And the they is Fox Soul Network. And also YouTube. And what we're finding, Sharon and I are finding that the best way to access it is to go to YouTube and type in Fox Soul. And the name of our film is called Gabriel's Daughter, The Life and Legacy of Clara Brown. Wow, this looks amazing. It looks like I want to jump in the screen and see it. It looks great. So what was it like to even start putting something like this together? Sharon, would you like to talk a little bit? Because I know I (laughs) do. So, you know, Lori and I met back uh, in 2003, right before she was going to be singing the role of Clara Brown. Uh, in an opera called Gabriel's Daughter in Central City, Colorado, where Clara had the most impact. And since that time, we have been trying to tell Clara's story in many different ways. And we finally settled on this documentary. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how, that's the genesis of how it's going to be. And so you might be asking, who is Clara Brown? Yeah. Clara Brown was born enslaved and she became one of the wealthiest women in Colorado in the early 1800s. And uh, but the treasure that she was seeking was not, you know, financial uh, treasure. 
she was looking for her only surviving daughter, mm. Liza Jane, who had been sold away from her, along with her other family, sold away from her at an auction. So that's the th other through line. That's the story within the story. We won't we mm. won't give, we won't give it up. Give up the ending. But oh, no, no spoilers. No, spoilers. no. no spoilers. <laughs> that's the story within the story. Is that Clara was looking for Eliza Jane. And along the way, she became very wealthy, very well respected. Um, mm. She wasn't about the money. She was about helping people. She had compassion and love for everybody. And um, and at one point, they called her the angel of the Rockies. Because mm. no matter what color you were, no matter who you were, um, she would make sure you had what you needed in order to be successful in Central City. Uh, Colorado. She she sounds like she had a, a good heart. She was a good-hearted uh, uh, person, you know. Um, that, that's what was, I'm gathering she from like, her. She was the matriarch of the African-American community out in mm -hmm. Colorado because at one point she goes back to Kentucky and brings freed slaves back with her and sets them mm -hmm. up in businesses and to make sure they are successful. So she is also known as the matriarch of the African American community in Colorado. Okay, do, do we need a Clara Brown today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, she also um, started lots of churches. I think, wasn't it 31? She started a lot, I can't remember how many. But 31 churches? Was it 31, Sharon? Am I wrong about I don't that? remember the number, but some of them still exist today. But some of them still is, exist. Oh, Unbelievable. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow! So now I gotta go dig up in the in the in the history books. Mm -hmm. Well, before we jump all the way in, we do have a trailer that we can run. Mm -hmm. And again, let me put the uh, poster on the screen. Gabriel's, oh, sorry, Gabriel's double. Dead. What's wrong with me today? Okay. Uh, the life and legacy of Clara Brown: A celebration in song and spirit. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look at the uh, trailer, and then we'll come right back. I was about to go out to sing at the Central City Opera House, the role of a woman named Clara Brown. Clara Brown was born a slave. A slave for life. A slave for life. A slave for life. Slaves were denied the basic human right of remaining with their immediate family. And she did raise a family. She had four children, a son and three daughters. Eliza Jane was also sold to another family. After her daughter Eliza Jane is sold away from her, she has to sing an aria, of course. And that aria was so hard to get through, through the tears, to fight through the tears. <laughs> participation after the death of their father, George Brown, in getting Clara released and actually putting up some money that Clara was able to gain her freedom at last. But I kept right on moving. I went west, feeling my Liza Jane just might be out there. So Clara decided to uh, become a laundress, and it was a very difficult way to make a living. But at that time, it was very lucrative. And so between the real estate deals that she made and the uh, grub staking and her successful laundry business, she became so incredibly successful. She turned away luxuries from herself and was generous throughout her life. I had good news from Kentucky. They believe my daughter had been found. Well, sir, I was headed to find out right away. This is a story of triumph and overcoming that needs to be continuously retold. Wow. 
Wow, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I, I'm ready. I'm ready to see this uh, documentary. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued by the story, and I, I believe my audience is also intrigued. So, uh, you know, uh, you guys save the date and make sure you check out the streaming, and we'll have all the notes in the uh, in the note area uh, yeah. of this of this stream. <laughs> <laughs> um but but let's get back to this this is uh, now this looks like it was a labor of love um was this a labor of love it was <laughs> yeah um when you know as sharon said we have been trying to ever since we had that conversation as mothers pta mm -hmm. moms at that gathering uh we have been trying to figure out a way to retell Clara's story to get it out there so that more people would know about it. So it has mm. got different iterations in our imaginations in terms of what it might become. And then finally, just before COVID hit, was it 2019, Sharon, when yes. Henry gave me Henry Mollicone, who's the wonderful, wonderfully gifted composer. That's his music that you heard. Mm -hmm. uh, the libretto was by a Tony Award winning librettist, Bill Luce was his name. But Henry was, unfortunately, he was dying of cancer. Oh. He called me and he said, I just really want to see my opera done again before I pass away. And he gave us seed money. And I called Sharon. I was like, Henry is going to give us seed money, but it's not going to be enough for us to realize a full operatic production. But what I did say was now, I have really good friends who are wonderful singers. We have an absolutely amazing pianist, Alison Brewster Francetti, who's multi-Grammy nominated. And I thought we could get Alison to set the tracks for us and we can hire the singers uh, to come in and do excerpts. And then Sharon had the idea that we should tell her life chronologically using mixed media, using excerpts from the opera. So hence the project began to take shape. And, and was he able to see something before uh, heading out? That's a great question. And you know what? He wasn't able to see the opera, but I was thinking about that, Sharon, the other day. I was thinking how he did get a chance to see that his opera was going to take some kind of life. Mm. Yeah, he knew that we were going to make this documentary. He knew that, and he's in the documentary. And he is in it. So, mm -hmm. and that's a kind of a fun story, fun but challenging okay. story. Okay. Uh, so when we were recording, when we were actually filming, it was the height of COVID. There was mm. no traveling. Uh, Lori will talk about what we had to do to accommodate the accommodate the singers in the studio because you're singing and you can't be near each other. Um, oh. But because Henry was uh, getting cancer treatment, um, we couldn't have anybody around him. Plus, he couldn't fly, and he lives in California, and we're in New Jersey. So I actually, you know, you got to think out of the box here. And I sent my GoPro camera shipped it across the country and that's how we recorded his interview was through wow so there are many different ways that we were able to um film during mm -hmm. covid which was so he he did see pieces of it and he knows he's he knew he was in it uh so i think that was very great amen. amen and and you guys seem to to be innovative but how did you guys meet? Oh, <laughs> we, first, we met as uh, PTA moms actually sitting at the, because Sharon has wonderful twin boys who are now mm -hmm. men. <laughs> and I have a lovely daughter uh, who is now a grown woman, you know, she's 27. And we okay. were just sitting there and we were, we met at the PTA meeting. That's how we first met. We just started a conversation and it was right before she was going to go out and sing. And I, she's like telling, she says, do you know who Clara Brown is? I said, no. So she started to tell me, oh my God. I was like, wow, how come we've wow. never heard of this woman? I mean, that was what was driving me. It's like, how come no, how can, how can we have never heard of her? Wow. As, a, as you know, here in the East, 
she she is somewhat known in Colorado, but other than that, she's just not known. And and twin has, awesome. Karen has twin twin boys, and Clara had twin girls. One of them <laughs> found, and one of them survived, and that was the surviving daughter that she was looking mm. for throughout her. Throughout so her there life. was that connection as well. You know, Lori has a daughter. She was looking for her daughter. I have twins. She had twins. I mean, there's just so many. So, so you're basically saying it pays to speak to your other parents in PTA. That's what. Yes. <laughs> <that's> what <it laughs> <is>. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So, so um, in terms of working everything together, what what did that look like? Now you you've already you already shared the the approach mm -hmm. to to coming out with the end. But what was it like like sitting in the first meeting brainstorming, well we have some seed money. Mm -hmm. How are we doing this? Was were you guys pulling your hair out? Were you guys having a drink? Um someone <laughs> needed to smoke like uh did anyone get a headache? You know, was there an argument in love, you know? <laughs> No, no. You know, okay. we we knew that we wanted to uh, to do excerpts from the opera, right, Lori? Yes. And I, I think, as far as you know, I think the the part that we had to work on was which parts, which arias, or which songs that we would use. We would use and how much of each song. So that was really. I, right at the very beginning, that was what yeah. we had That's to first thing figure we out. Absolutely, yeah. So let me let me put on a nice hypothetical uh, scenario. If if your documentary was going to be, or let's yeah, hypothetically, it's 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 translated into or converted into a movie. Who, who, which actor that's out right now you think can actually play the role of Clara Brown? Me, myself, and I. And I am serious about that thing, you know? I am Southern born. She was Southern born. She is Clara Brown. I am Lori. Claim Brown. it. Claim it. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow, very strong. There was a reason I was chosen by John Moriarty, who was the uh, mm -hmm. general director of the opera company at the time. I was out there singing actually Tituba in the Crucible. Mm. And after on the last, the last performance, John came backstage and he said, have you ever heard of a woman named Clara Brown? And I was like, no. He said, well, I want you to, you know, look her up. And because mm. I, there is a possibility that we might be commissioning an opera about her life. Mm. And sure enough, fast forward, I don't know if it was a couple of years, I had forgotten all about that conversation with John. And then sure enough, they were, my agent called and said, oh, Central City's coming to town and they want to hear you sing. And uh, when I walked in the room, John Moriarty came up to me and he said, all you have to do is sing. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in and I sang. And the next thing you know, I was uh, hired you know, to do that role. And then there was controversy because the outgoing general director decided he didn't want to do that opera because he thought that it's about a black woman and it would not necessarily appeal to uh, their normal opera crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am here to tell you that by the grace of the divine, when I got there, they had me speak at black churches and on radio stations and at the state capitol. Mm. That opera ended up being the sleeper hit of the season. It was sold out every night. All mm. audiences, audiences that they had not normally been able to reach, African-American audiences and other mm. people of color, came in droves to see wow. that about Clara Brown. It sold out. And I, without giving up what happened at the end, people cried. Men, grown men, I don't care what color they were, women, and wasn't necessarily children in the audience, but mm -hmm. 
definitely it's a, children could come to see see the amazing. show. Um, that's, but that's it, amazing. But there was not a dry eye, in, okay. including me as Clara. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so Sharon, um, are you ready to direct this movie? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So we're going to be seeing, so we're going to have the documentary, which is already presented, it's produced and it's out, and we're going to see it on the 23rd. Um, at one o'clock. Fox Soul. Fox Soul. At one o'clock. S-O-U-L. Yes. Fox Soul. Yes. S-O-U-L. And, 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 and when can we expect the movie? Well, it's interesting that you should say movie because Sharon and I are th have been thinking Broadway. It would be make because okay. if you okay. heard the music, it really lends itself mm -hmm. to a Broadway, mm -hmm. to a, Broadway a big Broadway musical on the line of Showboat and um, Oklahoma and a little mm -hmm. Porgy and Restaurant. And that's Henry's okay. is eclectic and accessible as our Bill Luce's words. Um, okay. okay. So it, it definitely, we hoped, we are hoping to attract a Broadway, Broadway people, Broadway backers. So to see it on the, on the Broadway stage first. And yes, okay. in the role of Clara Brown, of course. Uh, yeah, well, you claimed it. I'm, you know, we're ready to go here. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. What would you like folks to get from the documentary when they look at it on the mm -hmm. 23rd? What do, what do you want them, to, what would they their uh, take away? What would you like them to take away from this film? I, I I think it's very inspirational. Mm -hmm. um, I find Clara very inspirational. And to me, um, her life and her legacy uh, touches, can touch everyone, mm -hmm. no matter what color, no matter what age. Um, I wish I was more like her. If I had had the challenges that she had in life, I don't know if I would be as magnanimous as she was. I mean, she mm -hmm. was just an amazing, amazing woman. So my hope is that people will be inspired by her, mm -hmm. um, by Clara. The music is a whole nother thing. It, it's just phenomenal music. Lori is Clara Brown personified. I mean, she's just, <laughs> Thank you. you know, she is a diva. So, and and a, and so I hope they come away with enjoying that music because it really I mean, I bet you they'll come back they'll come out of watching it and start humming some of those tunes. They are really okay. catchy. Yeah. Um, so those are my my two hopes is that they will be inspired by Clara and really enjoy this amazing music. Okay, so now let's talk about the the uh, humble achievements that the documentary has made so far, because I understand there has been some awards. So when you completed the the film, you visited a few festivals you want to talk a little bit about that i think sharon is in a better position to talk about the film festivals because she did the tedious <laughs> work of entering oh, she was she was the one pulling her hair out she yes. <laughs> all of these films in the festivals which i mean okay. we entered dozens, yeah, yeah dozens upon dozens of film festivals um, okay. Okay. and it was very interesting because some, some festivals will give you feedback and some won't. Um, but we were very, very fortunate to have garnered at least six, I believe it is, um, awards. Yes. Very um, exciting. We're clap that up. We're going to clap that up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two of them for best feature documentary, which was just, mm. um, fabulous for us. Uh, mm -hmm. One is the um, one it was in Manhattan, uh, the artist form of the moving image, 
-hmm. and our one and only award in any film festival in Colorado was from the Moon Dance International Film Festival in Boulder. Um, I was surprised that we didn't get more selections from them, mm -hmm. but it is not your typical documentary. Yeah. So I understand mm -hmm. that it may be a bit of a challenge for the judges because there's music involved and it's very mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, integrated with the story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, that is, that is amazing. I mean, um, and, and even uh, folks who might be aspiring uh, in whatever it is they, they uh, aspire to. Um, I like the the um, the different phases that you had to go through with each thing. So you you had the phase of creating it, then the phase of going to the festivals. Now you're actually sharing the word and saying, "Hey, you know, we're going to do a, a series of premieres, mm -hmm. which is uh, what we what you're doing right now." Mm -hmm. um, and chances are there'll be some other premieres coming up, mm -hmm. uh, apparently. So um, I like the different phases you guys are, are, are taking it, and um, definitely uh, wishing you guys major, major, major success with this. Mm -hmm. um, so before we run away, you're welcome. You're welcome. Before we run away, I like to humanize my guests a little bit. You guys are you guys are game to be humanized a little bit. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Lori. Yeah, Lori looks like I don't know about this. She's like, no, what does he want to find out? <laughs> It, it's it's not that bad. Sometimes you <laughs> violated, but you know it's it's not it's not a bad thing. That's okay. So, it's all good. Okay, so so um, and anyone can answer first. What is your favorite color? I love the color purple. Hence I the do. reason why our um, our ticker and our names are are embodied with the purple down there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful color and it is a spiritual color. Now, how did how did Sharon know that's your, your favorite? Because when I asked you guys, she actually said what your favorite color was. So I was, I'm kind of curious to find out, Sharon, how did you know that was her favorite color? I've known Lori a long time. I know her favorite color. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so so Sharon, do you have a favorite color? I, you know, I think that my my color preference changes a lot. So I don't not oh. like Lori, where it's I know it's purple. Sometimes I like blue. Sometimes okay. other colors. So no, I I guess I don't really have a favorite. So you you're a free spirit, is that what you? I think so. You're a free spirit. <laughs> okay, okay. It looks amazing in blue. I have to say. Oh. Oh, so you're she's amazing in blue. She looks beautiful with the. the Oh, on the documentary, she's wearing blue, and also ah. the, the latest PR picture. My headshot. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> you yeah. see, you see. All right. So if yeah. you had asked me what her favorite color, I would have guessed blue. I would have guessed. A, a yeah, but her, her answer now it's it's all up in the air now. She's, yeah. <laughs> she's a free spirit. So, so my next question is. Uh, when you're in the kitchen, what do you like to prepare? Ooh. You guys don't do kitchen stuff? I no. can tell you, Sharon, my favorite thing that Sharon prepares. Sharon okay. knows what it is. And I know what Lori's favorite thing is. Should we tell each other what it is what our favorite thing is? <laughs> what? Lori, <laughs> we're it up. <laughs> makes an amazing flourless chocolate cake it is mm. melt in your mouth it is just delicioso i could just eat the whole thing delicioso i like that i'm, I'm gonna try that out <laughs> yeah delicioso. and that's the only thing i bake i don't bake anything else you bake chocolate you said I make flourless. flourless chocolate cake but flourless that's chocolate cake it is so yes. good okay and Lori right. loves soup because her company's name is Opera Soup, Opera Soup Productions. Ah. And I was thinking about how putting together an opera could be compared to making a delicious pot of soup. 
You just need the right oh. ingredients. And that's you how see? I use four ingredients to make opera. <laughs> There's a God somewhere. Can you can wow. you guess what the, can you guess what the four ingredients are for an opera? Uh for an opera. Hmm. Well, you have to have a singer. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. An opera is a story told uh -huh. using music. So I just gave okay. you two of the ingredients. An opera is a story told using two ingredients. No, you said four. but I that, just um, gave you two. <laughs> oh, you just gave me two ingredients. <laughs> So one is a story and one is music. Yeah, you and, got two and, of them. And so what? And, and you need a uh, performer. You need is a singer a, to sing the music, and singer. then gonna, and then what's the last one? Uh, you need a, a musician. You need an orchestra. Yay! Oh, okay. Oh, All right. Bravo, 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 nice bravo, bravo, bravo. I'm, I'm happy I didn't have a senior moment there. <laughs> It would have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did really quite well. But that is what I ask the young audiences when I uh, mm. present opera, my opera soup productions. Okay, okay, all right. So, um, my my final question. Uh, now we, we're talking about documentaries. A, a lot of times, I speak to musicians, so um, I would normally ask them what they're listening to uh this week but in your case i mean i know we have a musician in the room but we're talking about a film so we're going to make an adjustment uh what is the latest movie you saw and you liked what it was uh, i mean you, you liked it sorry for you me it, it would be american fiction with jeffrey wright Oh my mm. goodness, I could watch that movie over. I just recently saw it. It is absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Okay, American movie. fiction. American mm. fiction. Yeah, I want to see that. I, I oh, honestly so haven't gone to see anything that. Um, uh, you've just. I, I haven't gone to on... see anything. I don't have, re you know, I've been working on this. So. Yeah, <laughs> you've yeah, been yeah, working yeah. on Clara Brown. Okay, well, yeah. you know, that's fine. So, Clara Brown is your film, you know? You, yes. That's that's okay, you know, and, and it's a fair it's a fair situation uh, for this uh, episode of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, is there anything that you want to talk about that I didn't cover in the interview, and you can mention it to the audience? Oh, the other thing that we're doing, and love mm -hmm. to put it out there is we are pairing, partnering with the um, History Colorado Museum in November. Uh, we're, they're flying us out there to Denver and we're going to show the film and then do a Q&A afterward. And we may end up doing it at a historic black church where Clara is on the initial roles, uh, founder. So, and that holds like 500, which would be just, Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, whether it's there or it's at the museum, we're doing that. Now, Lori is an educator. And um, mm -hmm. before we do that, she's going to, well, Lori, you speak what you're During going the to day, do. I'm an out, since I am an outreach artist, I will be doing an activity with young people. Uh, I think it's middle school and high school kids. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be doing something that's relevant to the film and to Clara Brown's life, uh, something mm. that's interactive, that, something that's a combination of what I do with young people when I present opera, because my whole goal, one of my missions has been to make opera accessible to mm. people's lives. And so this uh, is what Sharon and I are doing uh, out mm. in Colorado. We hope to do more of those. So we are inviting people to um, offer, it. we are available and you can, again, go to our website and you can click on um, how we, you can contact us. If you're interested in us coming to do a screening, a Q and A mixed with an opera outreach. Um, okay. So, um, we, and, we would yeah. love that opportunity. That would yeah. be really great. We're also tr looking into PBS. That yes. was our other thing. So it's, it was PBS, we hope to mm -hmm. connect 
them. We hope to do more screenings and Q&As. We hope um, our, one of our big bucket list dreams is the Broadway production. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that about gets it or does it. There's, well, there seems like there was one more thing I thought we, oh yeah, we were trying to get in touch with uh, Henry Louis Gates and see if we could do an extension because I'm curious as why I, uh, as to why I have such an affinity. I feel such an affinity to Clara Brown. Is there a connection there? And um, we want, wondered what her, where her descendants are. Nobody's quite able to get a hold okay. of it. We thought that would make for a really good and in, uh, interesting story. And if you want to get <laughs> metaphysical and metaphysical, could, could, could um, Sharon have possibly in her past life been one of the Brown daughters? Could uh, the guy who wrote the book about Clara Brown, Roger Baker, who's also very prominently featured in, could he have been the Brown guy, you know, the Master Brown? Mm. It's just so, I think it's, there's, there's something in there and that we could, there's a nugget in there that we could Okay, okay. So even well, the I author think... was not able to find uh, Clara's descendants. So right. that would that that really would be so interesting if he mm -hmm. could uh, Professor Gates could find her descendants. I, I would love to meet them. So that's another thing we're putting out in the universe. Right. Okay. So let me ask you. So when you go to Colorado, are you going to Colorado in the during the summertime? In November. No, November. No oh November, November. Yeah, so I think it's the 15th of November. Yes. Would you be taking the flowerless chocolate um, <laughs> to, to share? And, I should and, do uh, that, Lori. Oh, my goodness. That's a great idea. Yeah. I would be eating that on the plate. I would be yeah. eating that so much. Now, I'm going to have eat, to vacuum you can't pack eat. it or something. Now, you'd have to be strict on Lori. She cannot eat before the performance. It must be after the performance, uh, she can have a few pieces, crumbs. okay? Yeah, yes, we'll, we'll celebrate have... with Ani and Terry. Those are the two ladies who are uh, in charge. So we'll, we'll all share it amongst ourselves. So. Well, we want to shout out everyone that worked with you on the movie. On, yes. Well, on the documentary. Let me say it correctly. I know it's, it's still a movie, but it is. Um, but it's, it's a, a documentary. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm very, very sure they'll be proud to see you guys on this interview. And um, hopefully they can share it. We can get the word out. And um, I had fun doing this. Oh, and uh, we want to, so yes, so uh, you're welcome. Thank you. And we want to also thank uh, Randy Thomas. Just give him a quick Randy shout Thomas, out yeah. um, for making this uh, possible. So shout out to him and yes. his uh, and his crew. Yes. And um, you ladies have a beautiful evening. And let's do this again. Yes, we, we'll do this we're again doing it on, when we're going to Broadway or when it's on PBS or when we have contacted. We're on Henry Louis Gates show. <laughs> Let's do it again. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank really you. The honor was mine. Thank you so much. You're welcome.